Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Skylar. Recently, we decided to start watching Bob's Burgers to see what it was all about. And it didn't take us long to become completely obsessed with the show. But one of the things we love the most about the show is the brilliant end credit sequences. Which is why we created this podcast. Each week, we're going episode by episode to talk about the elaborate end credits. We're excited to have you join us right here on Bob's Credits. We'll make sure the Bob's Burgers end credits get the credit they're due. All right! Why are you shaking your shoulders already? I haven't even started singing the chipperoo. Because I'm dancing to the song we just wrote together. Okay. Well, how about this one? Oh, yeah, chipperoo. Chipperoo. Oh, yeah, chipperoo. Chipperoo. I'm wearing this dress for a little drama. Baby, come to mama. <laughs> Max is chipperoo. obsessed with... Don't go yet? Yeah. By Camila Cabello. Is that how you pronounce her name? I think so. I put it on every single time we get in the car and it drives Skylar crazy. My like pop obsession is the I'm levitating. Yeah, she makes me play that after I play my pop obsession. She's like, if we're going to listen to yours every single time I get in the car, you better put levitating on. But we listened to yours five times and mine once. Well, who's controlling the the music? You're driving, so. Yeah, I've got got control of the, uh, the phone over on my side. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to the ultimate pop song showdown. It's levitating versus don't go yet. No, this is Bob's credits. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a levitating versus don't go yet on our uh, Patreon. I wish we were (laughs) musically inclined. We could do like a mashup. Oh, I'm musically inclined. Okay. Oh my gosh. We have big news in the Harrison Miller house. Yeah, what is it? Max Miller, my fiance, bought a, I call it a dupe top machine. <laughs> a dupe top machine. It's like a beat maker, <laughs> drum machine, drum pad. The like thing that lights up and yeah. he like makes beats on it. And, but he like carries it around with him. Yeah. Like so Gene. if he, yeah. Well, thanks for oh, stealing my sorry, the, the end of my story. I, we can edit it so that you didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't it's ruin okay. It. So he, Max is just like becoming closer to Gene every day, and he told me he's going to try and figure out how to put some fart sounds <laughs> on it. <laughs> fart anyway. sounds and a bark noise. Maybe I'll get yep. a biscuit bark. Yeah, and a biscuit fart. Why not? I want all biscuit sounds. But whenever he has a new beat, I'll be like you know, in the other room working or something. And he has his headphones on plugged into the little dupe dot machine and he just carries it in with him and puts the headphones on me. At least I'm nice enough to do it on the headphones. Yeah, but you told me you bought speakers or whatever. But anyway. You're in trouble. Anyway, hey, hey, this is Bob's credits. Yeah. We're here to talk about the end credits to Bob's Burgers. But before we do that, we have to play our fan favorite game. Uh, no fan has ever told me that, but no, they participate when we do. That's it. true. They do. Yeah. They do enjoy it on 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 the gram. Y'all, not they. Bob's credits on Instagram, by the way. So we're going to play some here. Let's do it. Okay, you ready for your first pun? Uh huh. The Portobello, the Belt Burger. Bob. Yes. It's so Bob. I can't even. The celery stock around the clock tonight. Max. Yes. Wow. She's on. She's a lot of pressure here to go four and four. I see dead pickle burger. Bob. Max. We just talked about that. Yeah. This last night. This oh, there he is. There's Biscuit, Biscuit chiming in bit. with his squeak Beats. toy. Um, we have yet to get him a toy that doesn't squeak when we record. Why would we even think? I'm going to put this noise on my my drum machine. Okay, as long as it's not your banjo noise. (laughs) My banjo too. She hates that. Just the same four notes over and over again for the past five years. I'm learning. (laughs) Slowly. Okay. You ready for the last one? Mm Mm-hmm. Now that you've ruined your perfect record? Mm Mm-hmm. If you've got it, croissant it, burger. Please, please be Max. Bob. Oh, you started off so strong and then you just lost it. Yep. Should we get into this episode? Let's do it. Okay. Skylar, can we have the title and synopsis for season four, episode 16, please? Sure. 
I get a psych kick out of you. But I would like to say that if you're dyslexic, this really looks like it's spelled psych chic. Psych chic. Side chick. Side chick. No, chick is with a CK. I get a side chick out of you. That's, no, you no, you don't. No, that's a Sopranos episode, I feel like. Oh my God, some of their titles are just so good. Okay. All right, here is the synopsis. It's just another day at the restaurant until Linda becomes convinced she's now psychic. She gives free readings to all the customers, including Teddy, urging him to go out and look for a woman in a yellow dress. The kids take her talent to the horse tracks while Linda helps Detective Bosco try to catch the little boy bandit. Who's Sergeant Bosco? Well, thanks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the difference between sergeant and detective is. Well, sergeant's like... Can we... Can we... Would you be embarrassed if we shared our mansplaining story? Which mansplaining on the story? Mic? Remember when we were walking around the block and I was trying to tell you what mansplaining was? Yeah. And then I tried to mansplain to you what mansplaining yeah. was. So it went like this. Skylar, me, who's been a woman my whole life. No... Max, I don't think that's what mansplaining is. To me, it's just when a man tries to explain something to you that's obvious that you very well could know. Then what did you say? I don't remember. Okay, Max. No, that's not what mansplaining is. It's more when they're like pushing an opinion on you. And then we just were dead silence for a minute. And I was and just like, burst. I just mansplained, <laughs> mansplaining to you. Anyway. I really thought you were good because you were doing yourself. I thought you were going to do an impression of me. I don't have an impression of you. You're like, oh, I'm so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you look really cool. I think you look cooler than you are. A hundred percent. You have like tats. I'm so, I'm so and... far from cool. Yeah. I mean, hence carrying I'm, around your duped up I'm machine. No, yeah. I'm no Roy Kent. Is Roy no. Kent cool? Oh, that was good. Thank you. That was good. Everyone watching Ted Lasso? It's good stuff. Um <clears throat> This episode came out on April 6, 2014, and was written by John Schroeder and directed by Chris Song. What did you think about this episode? How do you feel about this episode? Wait, I have did you thoughts. say the date? Yes. That is going to be very important. Say that date one more time. It's super important for a fun fact I have. April 6, 2014. 2014. Yeah. All right. Now ask your question. Oh, you're going to leave? The, hang on, hang, hang in on. there, I'm, people. It's I'm not putting, planting I'm the seed. I'm planting it. Yeah. Um... This episode. Yes. How do you feel about it? What, do you want me to go first? You want me to tell you my thoughts? Yes, you, I'd love. Would you like me to mansplain a little yeah. bit about it to you? Yeah. I am so annoyed by Linda in this episode. I feel Bob. I think this episode in a, is an experience. Like I felt like I was living in Bob's body. Yeah, it's so. It's so, if that's if that was the goal to get you to like <laughs> kind of like feel for Bob, they do a good job. <laughs> I love Linda. Yeah. Every single episode. This one, she drives me crazy. Do you want to take a moment and eat, try and do our best, Linda, from this episode? Yeah. Okay. okay. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You got it. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm so annoyed with you. It's so annoying. <laughs> it's, spoiler alert, annoying in the credits. We'll... Um, <laughs> I just, it's almost as annoying as biscuits squeaking a toy while we're trying to record a During podcast. During a podcast. It's almost as annoying as two people having a podcast and not removing a dog's squeaky toys. Well, we did that initially, and then we've kind of embraced it that mm -hmm. he's he's just chiming in. He wants to be a part of the conversation, and this is how he does it. Um, under over biscuit will be passed out on the floor under over five minutes. Under. Okay, it's absolutely ten forty six. Absolutely, he's right got now. some. He's got some energy in him today. Clearly, yeah. Okay, All he's right. made his way to his bed at least, and he's squeaking over there. So All that's right. a good, a good thing. Yeah. So we're both very annoyed by Linda in this episode. Yes. Who do you think's more annoyed, Bob or us watching it? Bob, because Linda really starts interfering with people's lives, and I think. That's even more frustrating to him too than the than the noises she makes. Yeah, and then at the end when she's kind of like realizes that she was just using common sense. Yeah, it's almost painful to watch. 
So it's not one of the more rewatchable episodes. No, the voice we both just did is just so annoying. And constant. Yeah, and it just keeps happening and happening. Something I noticed in this episode was that the A story was ginormous, Mm -hmm. which is probably why we hear her doing that sound. Like, I missed having, like, a separate B story. The B story is probably the kids thing, and then maybe the runners are, like... Teddy going to find his woman. So they're all very A story related. So you don't get like the parents and then you go to the school and it's just all Linda. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. Any things you loved about the episode? Um, I, I love Bob. Bob like, going down the stairs. Bob going down the stairs, which we'll play, <laughs> we'll play at the very end. Well, the whole episode. That's so funny because Bob is annoyed by Linda. He doesn't think she's psychic, but she predicts that he's going to fall down the stairs so the he gets in his own head and yeah. can't go down the stairs normally. Every time he has to go down the stairs, it's hilarious. Um, and then when he falls at the end, which we'll play that clip right before, it's right before the end credits, it's so funny. It's and, so good. And H. John Benjamin's voice work as Bob, who has just fallen, we'll listen to it. Okay. It's so It's so well done. All right. <clears throat> I'll pay attention to that. It's almost like he's like, tucked his chin in when he's recording so you can imagine bob like fell over and he's like on his neck almost (laughs) (laughs) okay that was fun to try and kind of hurt oh okay (laughs) um voice acting can be painful i i didn't know should we jump into some fun facts or would you like i would love some fun facts i have some unless you have um these in your fun facts i have some voice actors returning i save that for you okay so we get olsen brenner returns the Mm -hmm. reporter which means the return Pam. of Pamela Adlon, Yay. who we love. Go watch Better Things on FX. She's phenomenal. Phenomenal. The show is phenomenal. Um, and it's coming back soon. And as Sergeant Bosco, we get Gary Colback, who I've done this with you before. Mm-hmm. You recognize, but he's he's in the comedy world. He's on the Redhead? No. Not the redhead. The brown headed man. Yes. The brunette. <laughs> the brown headed man. That's friends man. with the redhead because we saw them at that one concert. No, Gary Cole was not there at that concert. Gary, Cole, who's Gary Cole in Beep? Gary Cole is one of like her advisors. I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of his name right now. Oh, tall man. The taller one. Yeah, yeah. Tall man. There's... He looks like um the guy from Succession. The the brown haired one. <laughs> the the redheads. Can you tell? Can anybody tell? I'm not good at names. <laughs> um. The redhead daughter's husband. They kind of have the same vibe to me. Tom? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, think I, they look alike. Yeah, they're like tall and brunette and white. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The problem is that they're all brunette white men on V. But they're shorter. Which says, says a lot about the uh, American Political. government. <laughs> yes. Which is well done. Yeah. All right. Now that we've done the voice actors. Let's have some fun facts that people care yeah. about. Ooh, yeah. All right. So we have another introduction. Dizzy Dog is introduced in this episode as the official mascot for the wharf, but he was actually seen on the comic book cover in the kids rob a train. Which comic book cover did they have in that? I'm guessing maybe like Ollie, not Ollie, um, regular size Rudy uh-huh. had it in the little caboose. It's, I wonder what that's based on. It seems like a weird statue to have down at. Uh, on a pier. Well, it's their their official Wonder Wharf mascot. Oh, it's it's a Wonder Wharf thing. It's not just on the pier. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll keep an eye out for more. Does he make more appearances? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. Um, seems a little cheesy, but whatever. Okay. So this is not as lighthearted. It's kind of eerie and creepy. Oh, I, I, this is great. This is the kind of stuff we, you and I listen to we on normally podcasts, listen to, so yeah. bring it. Um, so as you know, this episode was written in 2014. Linda advises Gretchen to, to stay away from trains as she's journeying toward Philadelphia. So basically, it's this creepy foreshadowing of the 2015 Philadelphia train derailment, which happened in 2015. So you're saying that Linda is psychic? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bob's like, no. See, this is where I, I, my inner Bob, I'm like, that could happen. Like, she just, it was in the show. How and many it just train happened. derailments do you remember? <laughs> I don't know. And it's the Philadelphia train derailment. I don't know. 
It was a huge <clears throat> accident. It was huge. Linda's psychic. Yeah, you don't stop. Uh, nyang, no, nyang, no, 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 please don't. Okay. You're telling me you don't think that this is eerie in any way. That Am I going to fall down the stairs if I say no? I already fell down the stairs today. Oh, we did. You fell up them. I fell up the stairs coming home. <laughs> Ow. I fell and scraped my whole arm on the <laughs> Baby, wall. Baby, I fell. Baby, I fell. I'm sorry, you guys, to, de- to derail us, but in... Um, I derailed. Game day? Game night. Another in, great movie. Please go watch that movie please if you go want to watch laugh it. your and ass it off. It is rewatchable. It's so good. But there's this line where one of the characters falls and he goes, Baby, I fell. And it's not it's not like a laugh out loud moment. It's one that you have to you know when you find a movie line that is just so particularly funny to you, that's it. Max and I just die there's every time. There's something funny about saying describing exactly (laughs) what happened to you when everyone in the room or in the scene could see exactly what happened to you so when he falls really hard and just goes baby i fell (laughs) that's great so baby i fell backs up the stairs we say it to each other all the time you're telling me you don't find this eerie they the one reference to a train collision in bob's burgers is in Philadelphia in the one newsworthy. This is this is something tra- you're not even letting me finish. You're not even letting me finish. And the one like derailment, the biggest train crash in the states in recent times is in Philadelphia. This is kind of how I feel about whenever something happens and people say the Simpsons did it first or like the Simpsons predicted this. Uh huh. It's because when you do a show, when the show's on the air for that long. You're going to have a lot of coincidences pop up. You are no fun. I know. You I've are a everything. killjoy. I've ruined everything. He did this to me when I went to a psychic too, but that's a story for another day. I get a psychic out of you. Kick you down the <laughs> stairs. No, I'm not going to do that. Let's not publish <laughs> that. Okay. Um, now when I fall down the stairs later, is that going to be you predicted it? I didn't predict it. I'm saying that this is an eerie coincidence. You predicted that Biscuit was going to fall asleep. And oh, look, what's the he time? Did. What's the time? I, I didn't see the time when it did, but he it was a while ago. Yeah, whatever. It was definitely under That's five minutes. That's convenient for you. Um, I predicted that. I'm psychic. Okay, so we never get to see this ex-boyfriend of Gretchen's, but behind Bob's Burgers Tumblr, which is apparently the official Tumblr of the writers of Bob's Burgers, it looks like it's gone silent. Well, I think Tumblr in general has gone pretty silent. I feel like Gen Z would love Tumblr. But mm. I no, I checked like their Facebook and their Twitter and it's just like, I can't even, I'm not even positive it's official. It looks official, but they clearly have, they have no business running social medias. They're so busy, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but they did post this tarot card, this original art of Linda and Gretchen and this Philadelphia man is on it. Do you want to ta- check that out? Yeah. Okay, so they're both kind of like dressed like Adam and, and Eve. Mm-hmm. Look and at the Liberty Bell. There's a Liberty Bell in the background. Um, they've got She's got leaves on her nipples, and he's got leaves on his genitals. The lovers. Okay. I like it. We'll post this it. This looks like um, my, center, my sister sent us a tarot card sticker that she saw up in Washington at like a at a store mm-hmm. that had Bob on it. Mm-hmm. It's a tarot card and it says the griller. I wonder if that has to do with this because it looks similar. I thought it was cool. Anyway, we'll post we'll post the this picture on um our Insta. socials, Bob's credits, and I'll post the the sticker my sister sent us too. Oh, it Bob, says collect griller. all three. Oh, maybe the griller is one of them. No, it's not. The, it's different art. This is the Bob's art. So okay. they have Teddy. Teddy is the Hierophant. And then Judgment is the final one. That's Bob. Here. Bob is Get it? judging, yes, everyone. You. Me. I judge everyone. Um, we'll post those, yeah, on our socials. All right. Should we dive in? Yeah. Let's dive in the credits. As I mentioned, uh, right before the end credits... Bob takes a little tumble down the stairs. Bob? Yep. You are right? Yeah. Did you just fall? No, I did not fall. Okay. <laughs> I walked right. down the stairs. I walked down the stairs really 
I'll, I'll walk down the stairs. You see how he's like talking to his. Yeah. Like, uh, I thought I just heard a fall. <laughs> Gee. Yeah. Are you come down here for a sec. <laughs> sure, I'd love to. She is psychic. She is a witch. Spider. <laughs> Nothing's coming to me. <laughs> hate it <laughs> okay so after that last clip what do we see as it gets into the credits we see the classic kitchen scene with the girls prepping burgers bob cooking scratching his butt but in the window we see teddy dancing with the lady he thinks is the yellow dressed woman the one he sees at the racetrack who's mm-hmm. wearing like a yellow v- it's got some yellow on the vest. It's white yeah. and has like Floral. daisies. Yeah. yeah, but she's not wearing the vest in this. Is I she? think it's kind of like um, like I think she has like overalls. Oh, okay. Well, I'll keep looking. But. Yeah, it, it's a weird choice for Do me you, that that's what they went with. Don't you think for these end credits? Yeah, I mean, but that's what I'm saying. The B story and the runner weren't that great. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna pitch something. Yes. We're so like moody today but i would watch a full end credits of bob's slowly trying to walk down the stairs oh that would have been good oh my god skylar look <laughs> that's much better or we credits. see him actually fall down the stairs and he's like calling to yeah Jean. but even just like even if it's just him in that in that scene where he's like scooting down the stairs on his butt yeah like even if it's just like quiet and it's just him going like Oh, okay. I got yeah. It. Just just for the entirety of the credits, that would be so funny to me. And then what if like Gene walked out, or like one of the kids walked out from the fridge and just like looked at him like you're an idiot. I, I think that's so much better than he's in credits. But <laughs> yeah, it's just that that it just drives me crazy. So the they made a song out of it. Yeah. Wait, how do you think it was editing this episode or like directing this episode? You heard that those noises constantly for a week i don't know if this song is on the like bob's burgers album (laughs) but if it is i would skip it every time you tell him what i'm saying is that this is not going to end up on my little drum machine this sound effect noted i see a shape i see a shape i'm getting an image so we're seeing that the as this little like remix um, of Linda doing her psychic noise and all her little like psychic lines, um, what's going on in credits are all the same except for that Teddy and his the new uh, love interest are dancing in the background. But they exit the screen to the right. Yes. And then Linda comes into the window and then they dance backwards. Back across. Back uh, across. And so are we to assume, okay, so... Maybe Gene made this remix. They're playing it at the restaurant. And I love Teddy that. And Teddy brought his date and they're dancing to it. Yes, because Linda is not singing right. to it. She's just being Linda in the window. I like that theory. Nothing's coming to me. I see a shape. I see a shape. What was that end thing? <laughs> okay. What was that it, end thing? I just let it all play through because there isn't much happening in these credits. That end thing was him, her going like, rah, rah, dizzy dog. Rah. Oh, got yeah. it. What if like the internet's going to come after us? What if these are like the most beloved Linda moments? Bring it. I would, this is a hill I'll, I'll die <laughs> You're on. You're going to just like lock them in a room and play that track. Yeah, uh, absolutely. This could be used in to torture. torture. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Sorry, John Roberts. Your voice is lovely. Your Linda is amazing, but this is an annoying sound. Yeah. This is like, you know that scene in Dumb and Dumber? Uh, Do you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? I don't remember. It's up there with that. Okay. You know, when Jim Carrey goes like, Oh my God. (laughs) You just woke Biscuit up. Oh, I'm sorry. Does Biscuit (laughs) not like loud, (laughs) high-pitched noises coming in when when we're trying to do something? So, like you said, like, then Linda walks off the screen. Teddy and his uh, new little love interest are dancing. And Gene walks across the screen in his burger costume. Nothing new there. Just the music. The only thing I like about this is that I just still get all the feels when the family's back together in the restaurant. 
that's it. That's that's the only plus is that it's like it's a continuation of the episode because it's after Teddy's met this woman. Everyone's the woman back wasn't together. even like funny. Yeah, Teddy. Teddy needs to um, have higher standards. He's little. He's got low self esteem. Te- I, we could start a whole podcast psychoanalyzing. Teddy? Teddy. Well, maybe we'll do that over on Patreon at yeah, some point. We'll that'd do be a, fun. We should we... bring a therapist in. Oh my god, that'd be so I have so, so many funny. therapist friends. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll we'll work on that one. We'll do that. We'll do a psychoanalysis of Teddy over on the Patreon at some point. I love it. Go subscribe over there. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Bob's Credits. We have a lot of good episodes up right now. Yeah. And you guys, Halloween episodes are being recorded in the next couple weeks, and we know you want more Bob's Halloween content. Go over there. We're going to have Halloween content. We're going to have Thanksgiving content. And we're going to have tons of bonus Christmas content. Mm-hmm. Um, highlights, low lights. We, clearly the low light is the Linda noise. I have another pitch for you. Yeah. I would even like better no music, just regular prepping. And the little tiny jockey is like running from the cops through the scene or something. Okay. that's I like that too. I mean, like, Bob still wins. Dressed as the little boy bandit? Yeah. Tell me your lowlights. I don't need to go. It's the the music. It just bothers me so much. And also, like, like that, you just pitched two that were just so much better than Teddy dancing with this woman who was in it briefly. I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me. Should we just get to scoring? Yeah. We score on a scale of one to ten H's at the end of Tina's uh. <laughs> you want to go first? Yeah. Okay. Three. Wow. That's the lowest, I think. I should have had you lock your answer in because I don't want to persuade you. No, mine's low. You already had it locked in? Yeah. Okay. Mine's lower than yours. Wow. I'm going to do a 2.5 H's. Wow. I just, the noise bothers me so much. I want to shut it off. Yeah. And you're not even that sensitive to noises. I am hypersensitive to noises. So this is like a nightmare for me. There's something about it that's just so, super annoying that really like. And you get is all it earworm. annoyed. Is that what it's called? An earworm? I think. Isn't it like an earworm is like something you don't like it gets, that it like gets in sure, there. Sure, I just like, like it. Yeah. It also brings up how annoyed I am at Linda throughout the whole episode too. So you have this emotional annoyance, this like physical annoyance. I don't think we need to belabor this any longer. No. Anyway. That's uh, Bob's credits. Those are the we're, end credits. We're the Grinch. <laughs> yeah, we've ruined. We've ruined. Uh, I I can't imagine that any other uh, credits are going to score lower than that. But we'll see. We'll Maybe see. something will become the worst after this one. Yep. I just want to say that it's still above and beyond as far as end credit sequences in all TV goes. But yeah. in the Bob's world, it's on the lower end. Yep. Anyway, thank you everyone for listening. I've already pitched everything. I don't have to pitch anything. Uh, leave us reviews, though. We 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 love the reviews. Mm-hmm. We love hearing that you guys are loving it. Mm-hmm. Just got to click five stars, especially on Apple Podcasts. Um, meanwhile, Skyle, Skyler. Skyle, Skyle, or I'm talking like Bob who fell in the stairs. <laughs> God, that will take us out of here. I have nothing to say. Nothing? Nothing. You want to say stay? Eights to black. Well, it's a it's, it's a noise podcast. It's it's sound. Okay, <laughs> fades to white noise. <laughs> <laughs>